With what's done to World Iceborne comes Master Rank, a challenge that will test every hunter. But with the right gear and right builds, hunters can overcome anything. I'm Darkblade and we're back with even more amazing builds from Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at beginner master rank builds for the bow. The bow is one of the most mobile ranged weapons there is, able to make use of fast attacks which synergizes well with elemental and ailment damage. With that in mind, the majority of the builds I use are elemental based but come with survivability options to get players through the master rank story. Now a disclaimer for this series though, as Iceborne is still young, most hunters may not have been able to farm everything they need for the most high-end game builds, so this series focuses instead on thought armor set builds, highlighting some of the amazing armor designs while at the same time helping new players to Iceborne get through to the end of Iceborne's story. As a result, these builds will not feature Elder Dragon loot, and most of the customization with them come in the form of the different jewels, charms, and weaponry. Additionally, the weapons and armor won't feature augmentations, as augmentations are restricted to endgame activities. So, the first build I use is the Hornator Dragon build. This build is focused all around the dragon element. The Hornator outfit, not only being very easy to craft, comes with very useful skills in the form of weakness exploit and dragon rating. So couple this with a dragon bow from the dragon bone tree and you've got a combination of gear that synergizes well. So for this build I use the Hornator set, so that's the Hornator Helm Beta, Hornator Mail Beta, Hornator Van Braces Beta, Coil Beta, Greaves Alpha and I'm using a Health Charm 3. And for my bow I'm using the Dragon Seal Ald Bow 2. Like I said this is the weapons in the dragon bone tree, so you may not have upgraded it to this point as of yet. As for the jewels, like I said, not everyone may have the same amount of jewels here, most of these are optional, although for the bow to be its best there are a few mandatory ones. These include the mighty bow jewel to give us the bow charge plus skill, a spread jewel for a power shot skill, force shot jewel for that normal shot skill, and then afterwards I've gone for tenderizer jewel to max out weakness exploit, dragon jewels to max out the dragon rating, expert jewels for some critical eye, physique jewels for some constitution and these are also coupled with a few byproduct jewels in the form of a jumping jewel and sated jewel. So if you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina which is actually 200 health when you're on a hunt and you've taken all the relevant consumables. You have an attack of 282, we have 5% affinity which is actually 55% affinity so long as you're going for monster weak points and have tenderized that monster weak point first. You have a dragon rating of 680 with average Elder Seal, with close range, paralysis and sleep coatings. And as for the defense, you're fairly strong against dragon, but a little bit weak to water and fire. As for your skills, you have dragon attack level 6. This will max out the dragon rating of our build. You have health boost level 3, increasing our potential health to that maximum of 200. Weakness exploit level 3, which increases our affinity, so long as we're going for monster weak points. This is enhanced even further if we tenderize that monster weak point first. At level 3 it will be a potential maximum of 50%. We'll have constitution level 3. Constitution basically reduces the stamina cost of set moves, so dodging or firing the bow. You only really need to go to level 3 and then couple this with dash juice to have the maxed out effect of constitution. You'll have 3 mil level 1, a byproduct of the gear but can be useful as it potentially gives you a chance of not consuming a potion or other consumable when you take it during a hunt. And this could actually potentially save on potions and such as you progress through the story. You have a fluvial expert level 1, again a byproduct of the gear but negates the fluvial effect of the rotten veil. You have normal shots level 1, increasing the damage of shots performed with the R2 or RT. It would have been nice to get to level 2 but unfortunately we have limited slots to play with. You have power shots level 1 which enhances the shots done with circle or B when firing the bow. Again it would have been nice to get to level 2 but we are limited. You have Critical Eye at level 1, which gives us a boost to our affinity. Handicraft level 1, this is a complete byproduct of the gear, it's not needed on the bow or whatsoever. You have Evade Extender level 1, a byproduct of our jewels, but increases how far we can dodge. And you'll have Bow Charge plus level 1, allowing us to charge up our bow one extra level, increasing our potential damage. So there you have it, as you can see it is a straightforward dragon element build, utilising one of the easiest full set armours to get your hands on in the game. Now Hornators can be a little bit of a pain when you do kill them as they can explode and thus yield no loot, but there are ways around it, for example using the specimen skill can help keep them intact or using the poison ailment. 
but should you get this build, it works pretty well so long as the monster you are fighting is weak or susceptible to the dragon element. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Toby Kodachi Thunder build. This build utilizes the Toby Kodachi armor set as well as the Toby Kodachi bow, making it a very strong and potent Thunder build. It also comes with a lot of dual slots to play around with, so you're easily able to craft a fully functional build with this full armor set. So for this build you need the full Toby Kodachi set which includes the Hat Beta, Mel Beta, Van Braces Beta, Coil Beta and Greaves Beta. I'm also using an Exploited Charm too and for my weapon I'm using the Toby Kodachi Tree Thundering Strike Bow. Remember as I said depending how far you are through the game you may not get to the same point as this bow here but working in the same tree you'll eventually get to the same point. As for the jewels I've gone for the main mandatory bow ones here so I've gone for spread jewels, four shot jewels, mighty bow jewels, bolt jewels to max out the thunder rating of this build, I've gone for vitality jewels to max out the health boost, some physique jewels to get the constitution skill to at least level 3 and as always these come with byproducts, in this case it's a jumping jewel and sheath jewel. So if you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina which again like I said will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and you've taken all the relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 282 with 15% affinity which will actually be 65% affinity so long as you're attacking monster weak points and have tenderized that said weak point first. You have a thunder rating of 500 with close range, power and paralysis coatings with a decent defense that is incredibly strong against thunder but very weak to water. It's fairly neutral against the other elements as well. So as for the skills, you'll have Thunder Attack at level 6, increasing the Thunder rating of this build. You'll have Health Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Constitution level 3, Evade Extender level 3. This is a combination of byproducts of the gear and jewels we are using. Like I said, this increases the distance of our dodge moves. You'll have Thunder Resistance level 2, a byproduct of the gear, but can be useful when it comes to defense. You have Power Shots at level 2, Normal Shots level 1. Again, it would have been nice to get this to level 2, but in the case of this build, I've put the additional four shot jewel in the mantles so when we're wearing our mantles we at least get level two that way you have quick sheath level one a byproduct of our jewels but allows us to sheave our bow quickly you have jump master level one again a byproduct of the gear it's not really needed on the bow build really jump master enables no knockback when we perform at jumping attacks and you'll have bow charge plus level one so again as you can see it is a pretty straightforward powerful thunder build but just like the dragon build before this you need to take into account a monster's weakness you'll find that a lot of the full set armor pieces I'm using in this video the elemental attack is built into the armor itself so it's hard to switch them around whilst it doesn't become a problem when you're at the absolute end game of Monster Hunter World Iceborne it's something to be aware of when you're crafting gear and making use of the bow but nonetheless this is a fun build to use when a monster is weak to thunder Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Legiana Ice build. This build makes use of the entire Legiana set, including its bow. And on top of being a very strong ice build, it also has quite a few defensive skills. So for this build, I'm using the entire Legiana set, which includes the Helm Alpha, Mel Beta, Van Braces Beta, Coil Beta, and Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Fitness Charm 4. Take note, when you are leveling up, before you get to the Guiding Lands, the Fitness Charm will only be at level 3, but when you get to the Guiding Lands, you can level up to level 4. You'll also have the Mists Glacier, which is in the Legiana Bow Tree. As for the Jewels, you've got a few to play around with here. I've gone, of course, for the Mandatory Bow ones, which include the Force Shot and Spread Jewels. I've gone for Frost Jewels to max out the Frost rating of this build, Tenderizer Jewels for Weakness Exploit, I've gone for Vitality Jewels as well to boost our health a little bit. These come with additional skills in the form of a Throttle Jewel which gives us latent power and a KO Jewel that gives us the Slugger skill. So if you've done what I've done here you should have built with 130 health, 100 stamina. It would have been nice to get the health to 150 but at 130 coupled with the other defensive skills this build has it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Remember it will be more than 130 health when on a hunt when you've taken all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 294 with 50% affinity so long as you're going for monster weak points and have tenderized that monster weak point first. You have an ice elemental rating of 680 with close range power, poison and sleep coatings with a strong defense especially against ice and water but you're fairly weak to fire and thunder. 
As for the skills, you'll have Ice Attack level 6. This increases the ice damage of this build. You'll have Constitution level 4, which in all honesty will only be level 3 when you're going through the main story of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. You'll have Weakness Exploit level 3, Evade Window level 3, a byproduct of the gear but is very useful. It increases the invincibility frames when we perform dodges, so it adds to our survivability. You have Divine Blessing level 3, which gives us a chance of reducing the amount of damage we take when we get hit. At level 3 it's 50%. You have Health Boost level 2. It would have been nice to get this to level 3, but we only have limited slots to play with. We have Ice Resistance level 2. This is a byproduct of the gear, but comes in useful for increasing our ice defense rating. You have Windproof level 1, a byproduct of the gear, but can help resist wind attacks from monsters, especially flying wyverns. You have Normal Shots level 1, Power Shots level 1, Slugger level 1, increasing the knockout potential of our attacks. You have Airborne level 1, a byproduct of the gear, unfortunately, it's not really useful on this build. It basically increases the damage of our attacks in the air. And you'll have Latent Power level 1. Latent Power is a buff that kicks in after you've been fighting a monster for a set amount of time. And when it does so, it increases your affinity and reduces your stamina depletion by a certain percentage. Finally, you also have the set bonus, Legiana's Ambition Bow Charge Plus. This is basically the mighty bow jaw built into the gear. So. As you can see, it's a build aimed at utilizing the ice element, able to take on monsters who are weak or susceptible to ice. It's nice that the Legiana set comes with the Bow Charge Plus skill built in, but unfortunately it is tied to the ice element. If you don't mind having a little bit of a ice byproduct on your gear, then you can make use of different elements with this build, but it may not be most optimal. On top of that as well, it does have the bonus of having a high evade window and divine blessing, making it quite a nice defensive build. But anyway, let's move on to our fourth and final build and one of my personal favorites, which is the Raphalos Fire build. This makes use of having a high fire rating as well as a high attack rating. So for this build, I use the complete Raphalos set, which includes the Helm Alpha, Mel Alpha, Van Braces Alpha, Core Beta, and the Grease Alpha. I'm also using the Fitness Charm 4. Again, this will be Fitness Charm 3 if you're going through the story for the first time. And for my bow, I'm using the Anjanath Flame Bow 2, which is the bow from the Anjanath tree. You can replace this for the Raphalos bow if you so desire, but for this build I preferred the high attack and fire rating that the Anjanath bow provides. So as for the jewels, you've only got a few to play around with unfortunately. I've gone for spread and four shot jewels, I've then gone for a mighty bow jewel, vitality jewels, a blaze jewel, and finally one of the vitality jewels also had a throttle jewel attached to it. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina. Again, as always, 150 health translates to 200 health when you're on a hunt and you've taken all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 344 with minus 15% affinity, which will actually be 35% affinity when you're on a hunt and going for monster weak points so long as you've tenderized them first. You'll have a fire rating of 640 with close range power and blast coatings with a strong defense against fire, water and ice, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for the skills, you'll have fire attack level 6, increasing the fire damage of this build. You'll have attack boost level 4, increasing the raw attack of this build. And at level 4, you also get a bonus 5% affinity. You'll have constitution level 4, which will only be level 3 when you're going through the story for the first time. You'll have health boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, slinger capacity level 2, a byproduct of the gear, but increases how much slinger ammo we can have equipped at any one time. You'll have normal shots, power shots, latent power, Jump Master, Bow Charge Plus, and for the set bonus, you have the Raphalos Essence, which provides you with the Ballistic Skill, which shortens the distance before ammo and arrows reach their maximum power. So basically, it affects the critical distance of your shots. It also means that you can fire power shots point blank and have them dealing their maximum damage. So as you can see, this is a very powerful build, making use of not only raw attack, but that fire elemental attack. Of course, taking monsters' weaknesses into account is necessary with this build, as with all the bow builds, but this build also has the added bonus of having maximum health and is overall quite functional. I should also add that the Raphalos armor has always been one of my personal favorites in terms of looks, so I'm pleased I was able to build a decent beginner bow build around it. Of course, like I said, you can swap out the Anjanath bow if you so desire for the Raphalos bow if you would prefer a bit more affinity, but as always, with Monster Hunter World, the choice is up to you. So there we have it. Those are beginner full set builds that I use for the bow in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now of course there are a lot more end game mix sets to come and as I always say you don't have to use what is shown in these videos. Use what you want to use as most tasks in Monster Hunter World Iceborne can be taken on with any item or gear set. 
but remember also that builds taken from previous seasons can still work in Iceborne, at least for early game. They will have the DPS, but they may not have the survivability. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative, and until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you beginner Iceborne builds I use for the bow in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.